Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Today, we have a special guest. Today, we have Dr. Nana Corsa. And she is going to be talking to you about all of the amazing things that she's up to and how she has turned her fears, faced them, overcome them, and has become victorious. She is a nephrologist um, by training and uh, now works as a locum tenens adult hospitalist. So, so Dr. Corsa, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So tell, tell us, yeah, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what you're up to, what you're doing. Let the audience know who you are. Thanks for the intro. So like you said, I am a former nephrologist turned locum hospitalist. And I did that because I wanted better work-life balance for me and my family, and it's worked out really well. In addition to that, I get to be a life coach and a financial coach who is passionate about helping female physicians live wealthy lives, help them get out of debt and live wealthy lives. So that's something I'm super passionate and excited about these days. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have any... um... Any, any, any ways in which people can reach out to you or is there any particular project that you are currently working on that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, so I'm always on Facebook. If you look me up on Facebook, I'm easy to reach that way. I also have a website, www.mdworklifebalance.com and I also have a business Facebook page, MD Work Life Balance page that you can reach me on. I currently work with female physicians in two ways. I have two boot camps, really, the money boot camp and work-life balance boot camp. And so the work-life balance boot camp is for people who are tired of being burned out, being out of balance, and want to live life on their own terms and enjoy their lives more. And the money boot camp is for people to have financial blueprints that can help them pay off debt and build wealth. So whether your goal is to go crazy on your debt and knock it out quickly or to build wealth and become the eventual millionaires that we are are as doctors, I'm happy to help. So let's face it, if you're a physician, even if you make 100,000 a year, In 10 years, you've made a million dollars. Where did the money go? What can you say for that? I I think being intentional can help you use that in a wise fashion and get more of what you want. Awesome. That's, yeah, I think about that quite a bit, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, you know, know, as I'm listening to you, I kind of sense that the motivation comes from a deeper level. Is there some experience that you had that made you interested in doing this work? Yes. I was totally burnt out in 2015. And actually, at that time, I didn't know what that that was. It was through research like that. I knew that's what I was going through. I was working 100-hour work weeks. I was a partner in a neurology practice. It was paying really well. But on any given day, I was working out of maybe a couple of clinics, going to dialysis units, hospital rounds in different towns. And it just got too much for me. And on top of that, I had two little ones. And then to make Matters worse, my husband decided to go back to school. So he was in another town two hours away, and I was practically a single mother 
working 100 hour weeks. It wasn't working too well for me. So I literally burnt myself out. And wow. I got to the point, yeah, it, it got pretty crazy. I put myself um, through some crazy <laughs> stuff back then. I, I look back and I'm like, wow, how did I pull all of that off? But somehow I did. So I knew something had to change, but I was scared to do things differently. Fear was in my way. And I thought to myself, geez, how can I make this transition? to a life that I like, that's more in my own terms, without being so worried. And one day I was driving to a hospital and I had my aha moment. I was listening to the radio, Dave Ramsey came on, he was talking about personal finance. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's what I need to do. I need to get my money in order so I could do whatever the heck I want. I, I hope, um, Using heck is okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can say that. <laughs> okay. So I started self-educating, listening to podcasts, reading so many books um, and blogs, audio books, you name it. Mm -hmm. And I finally worked with a financial coach and a certified financial planner, came up with a plan that I was very happy with. That was definitely going to get me to where I needed to get without worrying about money. And also I hired a coach who helped me with my transition from nephrology to doing locums. And so those, the financial coach and the life coach had a major impact on me. I was okay. super scared. I did research and they came in to help me for what I had learned and to practice to get what I wanted. So I just felt like I want to do the same for other people out there who want to do that. So that's where it all came from. Wow. That is an amazing story. So basically you, you had this moment in the car and that, that one moment you just basically transformed it into action and you just dug into learning all about what does it take, getting coaching, and now you're paying it for it. That is absolutely amazing. And so how long has it been now that you've been, um, been a coach? Like how long has that been? It's been two years now since I've been a coach. Um, the first year I was in training and coaching at the same time. But last year was the first time I kind of um, stepped out and, and did more of it after graduation from coach training okay and then did yeah. you um did you continue like so are you so you mentioned that you're a locum tenens hospitalist yeah. um you may want to describe that a little bit more because not everybody who's listening to the podcast is just in medicine most people listening are professional women so they can be in other different other fields so if you don't mind describing what does that mean exactly what's a locum tenens doctor do thanks for asking that because Guess what? I didn't know either till 2015. <laughs> so I, after training, I was working and I had no idea that doctors had the option of working per diem in the non-traditional job where you, different um, hospitals and physician offices get to hire you on an hourly basis and pay you for the work done. So that means you don't have to show up to work all the time. You only go when they need you. And the beauty of it is you get to pick what times work for you. And then you work during those times. And so that's what got me more flexibility. And so that's what a locum tenens physician does. Basically get hired to work on per hourly basis. Um, and the easiest way to do that is by working with recruiters. Um, but you can also call hospitals yourself to offer your services. Awesome. So you have now uh, renewed freedom and control over your schedules, what it sounds like. Is, yes. is that about right? Okay. And that yes. has to be a very impactful item to making sure that your wellness is intact. Would it's be been very... Yes, it's been very impactful uh, because 
now I get to pick when I want to work and I get to schedule my work around my personal life instead of the other way around. And so that's really given me a lot of freedom. Awesome. That's awesome. So it can't be something that, um, well, to be honest with you, if it were something that was easy or something that people felt completely comfortable with, most people would be doing it. And we know that not to be true. So you took a huge leap of faith walking towards this new career, passion pursuit in coaching. Now, what was that like? Let's talk a little bit about the fear that was involved in that, making that leap and how you overcame that. So that is still scary to me, by the way, but I'm working through it. <laughs> as you know, as physicians, are, we get trained, like go to school, get a degree, get a job. That's the program. Oh yeah, that is the program. <laughs> you deviate from the program, it's like, what are you yes. doing? <laughs> So I'm like, oh no, you can't go, you know, down a different path. That's scary. You're going to die. And I, it was quite scary for me to make that leap. However, my why was very strong. Now, I am an introvert and putting myself out there is not something I like to do. However, what my coaches did for me, helping me have my financial blueprint, helping me get out of debt, helping me come up with the way of building wealth really was freeing for me. And also my um, life coach helped me make the transition much smoother than I would have done on my own. She helped ease my fears. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. So that really, um, the why is really strong. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who want to do differently but they're mm -hmm. scared because of the default programming and how our brains react to it when we try to go off track. Just fear comes in and gets in the way. <laughs> yes, so, yes, it does. <laughs> yes. So, so although it still scares me, I feel like people need to hear this. Wherever you are, you're not stuck. It's not the end of the story. It's just the beginning. And who better to share that story than somebody who's walked through their shoes, been there, done that, and can relate to them. So that's the reason why I keep putting myself out there. That's why last year I reached out to you to find you on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary for me, but you were so nice and gracious. And you're like, yes, you can do it. Go get it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> so... I started doing Facebook lives in the group, like you had suggested, right? I, I worked, I just had a friend of mine and I had a private group by ourselves where yeah. I would do the lives and she would watch and critique it. And eventually I came out of my closet and started doing it on my <laughs> business page. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So the why is so strong that I need to go against the grain of what's comfortable for me to get the message out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say it's it's been a, and you know I, I I really didn't know that um, that one little note that we that one little conversation that we had uh, via messenger yeah. was so impactful. So I feel like my heart is so warm from that. <laughs> but it um, was very impactful. Yes, so I'm just so happy to hear that because you know it's amazing how you know you just never know what that one, one thought or a moment of encouragement or um, just when we, when we just uplift each other, what, what can happen downstream? And so it's just been really cool watching your, your star rise over the year. Because, you know, uh, just to the audience to be aware, um, that's Karash and I are in several groups for entrepreneurs and um, doctors on social media and et cetera. Uh, and she has been just very consistent, very, um, she's just, she had, like she said, she's been putting herself out there and it shows, and it shows that her why is strong. And um, you know, a lot of us like to talk about uh, the book by um, Sam, Simon Sinek, which is, you know, um, what is it called? Is it Know Start Your with why, why? Start With Your Why. And I mean, yeah. it, it's so true. Like when you 
have a heart for what you're doing, when you have um, a genuine driver, it comes across in everything that you do. And, you know, it's clear that your why is strong because every single time that you get on a Facebook Live, it is clear that your goal is to help other women be successful. It is very clear. And so there's no doubt in my mind that your star is going to continue to rise and that you're going to be amazingly successful. And I'm just glad that I know you. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you. It means a lot coming from you because you definitely inspired me. So thanks for that. No problem. My pleasure. You know, so that is, uh, so your journey has been so amazing. And um, like I said, we're going to continue to watch and see like where it's headed because I know it's, it's only headed for greatness even more than it already has achieved. But you know, like when we think about, um, we think about our journey, we think about the obstacles that we had to overcome and the fear that we faced and how we overcame it. We learn lessons from that. And I guess if you could think of the most important lesson that you learned from this experience that you'd like to share with the audience, um, I think that that would be amazing if you could do that. All right. So the biggest lesson I've learned is negative emotions, including fear, are not gonna kill us. Now, we might feel we're gonna die when we experience them, mm-hmm. but they're not gonna kill us. <laughs> Fear is one of our biggest teachers, is here to teach us something. And so instead of avoiding it, we should become friends with it and learn the lessons is here to teach us. That is the way to our success. Ooh, preach, that is the <laughs> truth. <laughs> That is the truth. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, when fear comes in, you should take a minute and become friends with fear and say, hey, what? why am I having this fear? Your answer to that question will let you know the thoughts behind that fear. And then you've nailed exactly what's causing it. Then you get to decide, do you want to keep that or you want to change it? Obviously, most of us would like to change it. Right. For example, in my case, public speaking, you know, I used to think that there was something I would never, I would never do, <laughs> <laughs> like during Facebook lives and doing public speaking, not my thing, but I know that that's my, that's the only way that I can get my message out there. So if I let fear stop me, that's the end of the dream. But if I become friends with fear and I know that okay, well, the thoughts behind the fear, I would look silly. People would think I'm ridiculous. What is she doing? I just want to hide from people, right? All these thoughts feeding into the fear. Once I uncovered them, I was like, it's not so bad if people think I'm an idiot if I'm going to help other women. Because one of my mindset coaches taught me that if you do a live or put yourself out there and even just one person gets impacted by it, that's all you need. Oh, yes. So oh, yes. I'm just like, I'm just going to do it. And after the first few ones, I knew I wasn't going to die, like Pierre mm-hmm. was telling me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so like, if just one person will get something out of this, I'm doing it. So Fear has taught me a lot. It's taught me that if I listen to it, I'll get the answers. And it's not going to kill me. If I make friends with it, it will leave me alone. If I resist it, it's just going to keep coming back until I learn the lessons. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Yeah, it is so funny that you talk about that because, like, uh, you know, uh, before, like, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, when I first started doing videos and things like that, I was like, Oh my God. You know, like, just like you said, like you had to have this overwhelming feeling like I'm yeah. going to look dumb or it is going to be like, you know, broccoli in my teeth or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like there's going to be something and people are not going to listen to me, but people want to hear what you have to say, you know, because you have so much to give. And yeah. So, you know, why deprive that one person, even, even if it is just one person of getting that yes. message just because of your fear. No, that's, yes. that's, that's a gem right there for sure. <laughs> for sure. Awesome. All right. Um, so 
you know, so we kind of talked about um, the fears you you have been facing, and it sounds like you are, even even though you're more comfortable now talking, um, kind of um, extemporaneously, extemporaneously, you still like you still have a little bit of a little bit of fear, which is natural, right? Because I mean, I feel like I still have that every single day. I'm working on that, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but we definitely don't let that stop us. And I love what you said. You said turn it into your friend and utilize it, like fuel it, help it to be the fuel that helps you to push forward so that you could get that message out so that you could reach that person so that their lives can be changed. So that is amazing. Um, so, you know, I just, um, thank you. Thank you for that. That is just uh, You're that's welcome. a great way to, to put it. <laughs> I think about you guys, you're going to put that as your quote for the, um, when I'm doing a promotion for this podcast. All right, so, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're pretty much uh, coming towards the end of our chat. And this is the part where we do the fill in the blank segment of the show. And um, the first sentence to, for you to complete is, to me, fearless freedom means... To me, fearless freedom means serving others and not making it about me. Because awesome. whenever I think about me, that's when fear sets in. But when I think about serving and loving on others, that tends to go away. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, glad you liked it, girl. Oh, it's man. Been, it's, it's, it's been like, so true. <laughs> it's like, speak, speak it. You know, that's so the truth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if I am fearless, I will. If I am fearless, I will do some group coaching, do more public speaking, and um, start my own podcast. <laughs> oh, you definitely join your club. Should. You should. You should start your own podcast. Definitely. Um, definitely. We could talk about that more offline, but yes, you should definitely sure. go for that one. That should be like, that should be the Band-Aid that's taken off for 2019. How's that? Make, it, make well, that a goal. I might take you up on that offer and then we'll be <laughs> chatting about it the next year. <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. And then our last and final, um, uh, well, that's a little redundant, but our last uh, fill in the blank is, my battle cry is? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Awesome. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to talk with us and hang out. And, you know, this was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to being on your podcast now, see, because I, I know I'm manifesting it for you. I know it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm waiting for that invite. <laughs> All right. I might take you up on that offer. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Have an amazing day. And um, I am so excited about this podcast. It's going to be the bomb. And I know that even though people are seeing your face on Facebook, now they get to hear your voice and they get to reach out to you even more. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on this journey. Fear is all around us. It strives to stop us from achieving our greatness. We have the tools to be overcomers by sharing our stories supporting each other, and doing self-reflection, we can do this. If you found value in this conversation today, please be sure to subscribe to and share this podcast with your friends. By going to your favorite podcast platform, leaving a review and a five-star rating, you will help to get the word out about it. And that is much appreciated. Thanks again for spending time with us. I appreciate your time and your attention. It is my hope that you will punch fear in the face today and that you will be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.